Welcome to a step-by-step -step tutorial on using the simple JWT login plugin for WordPress. In this tutorial, we will utilize the tools Docker with Docker Engine, Docker Compose, Visual Studio Code, Postman, WordPress with MySQL, and the simple JWT login plugin. If you don't already have a copy of Docker Desktop, you can download a free copy at docker.com. I also recommend you go ahead and create a free account on hub.docker.com so that when you download it and install, you can log in with the free account. For this tutorial, I will also be using VS Code. Though it's not required, it is recommended. You can get a free copy of this at code.visualstudio.com. The tool we'll be using, or app we'll be using to make our requests, is Postman. If you don't have a copy, you can go ahead and download it at postman.com forward slash downloads. I also recommend you create a free account with Postman so that when you load the application up, you can log in and save your requests. The topics covered in this tutorial include setting up a local copy of WordPress using Docker Compose, installing the JWT login plugin with the default settings, making requests using Postman, and then we'll dive a little deeper into the JWT login plugin using custom authorization keys and switching from using query request parameters to the header authorization with bearer tokens. Before we get up and running with Docker, the first thing you need to do is create a folder somewhere on your computer called simple JWT login example. You can name it whatever you like, but this folder will be used to house the Docker compose file that I will be providing to you, which is available in the description of this video. On the GitHub page, go ahead and find the docker-compose.yml file and then click on the raw download link and save the file in the folder you created earlier. Now go ahead and load up either VS Code or a terminal window. For this example, I'm going to use VS Code where the file is located. I'm going to then change the ports because I already have certain containers running on these ports. If you do not, you don't have to change that. Otherwise, you can leave it as default. Then go ahead and open up a terminal in VS Code and run docker compose up-d in detach mode, which will spin up your containers. Now, let's switch over to Docker Desktop where we should see our container up and running with the port set for WordPress and PHP MyAdmin. Next, let's go through the simple WordPress setup. Jump on over to your Docker environment if you're not already there. Click on the port for where WordPress is installed. It should load up in your local browser. Click on your language. Give it a site title, whatever it may be. And then for the username and password for a local test environment, I'm doing it very weak. So I'm setting up the username as admin and then the password as admin1, which then requires by WordPress to confirm that it is a weak password. As for the email, I'm going to set that up as admin at admin.com and then disable search visibility and click install WordPress. I'm going to click OK, click on login, and then go through the login process by providing my credentials. Next, let's go ahead and let's install the plugin. Jump over to your WordPress dashboard and click on the plugins link. In the plugins link, click on the add new plugin and search JWT login or simple JWT login. In the results, click on install now for simple JWT login, wait till it installs, and then click on the activate button. Before we continue, Let's open up a new tab in our browser and go to the simplejwtlogin.com website and click on the docs link. It's important to know where the docs are located. Back on the WordPress dashboard, open the simple JWT login settings. Then in the general tab, locate JW JWT decryption key. Add a custom generated key. You can use any password generator you like or type in something simple yourself. I'm going to use a 60 character password and then I'm going to go ahead and add that to my JWT decryption key input field. I'm also going to temporarily turn off the header field. We'll come back to this later on and then click the save button. Next, we'll click on the authentication tab and set allow authentication to yes. 
Then, we'll scroll down to JWT Payload Parameters and check Email, ID, Site, and Username, then click the Save button. Go back up to the Authentication Example URL and click on the Copy button. Notice how it is set to Post Type and not Git. Let's jump over to Postman. In Postman, add a new request by clicking on the plus sign and set it to Post, then paste in the copied URL. In the Query Params, Change the value of your email and password to the ones you set. For my example, it's admin at admin, and the password is admin1. Now click on the send button, and it should generate a JWT for you. Notice if you change it to git, it fails. Next, we will test out the generated JWT using validation. Switch over to the Login tab. Under the JWT Login settings, we have this set to Login by Email. To the right of this, we must supply the Email Payload parameter and then click the Save button. Now, switch over to the Authentication tab and scroll down to the Validate JWT URL example. Copy the URL. Back in Postman, add a new request and paste in the URL. We then need to copy the generated JWT and paste its value in for the JWT query parameter. Clicking the Send button should return to us a valid object with the key Success set to True. Now, let's go back and try using the WordPress username for the action with the JWT parameter key. Because we made this part of the payload, it should work. And it does. However, if we go back and change the payload to some random key that's not set in there, like blarg, and save it, and then attempt to execute it, it should fail. And it did. So we have to change it back, validate it, make sure that the action is set to the same as the value payload, and test it. And there you go. Now that we've tested validation of the token, let's enable auto login. Under the login tab, copy the auto login git link. Then, back in Postman, add a new Git request and paste in the link. Back in the auto-generated JWT, copy that and paste it in for the auto-login query JWT parameter. Then click Send. It should fail. To resolve this, Jump back into the JWT login settings and set Allow Auto Login to Yes and click Save. Then rerun the request in Postman. You might have to regenerate a new JWT. Next, let's add another layer of security by requiring custom authentication keys to be supplied by the query parameters. Under the Authentication tab, set the Authentication Requires auth code to Yes, and make sure you click the Save button. Then, under the Auth Codes tab, below the word Config, you can change this if you want, but I'm going to leave it as capitals, and then generate your own authentication key. You could add roles and you could add an expiration date, but for this example, I'm not going to set those. I'm going to give a generated key, a custom key. I'm going to go ahead and save this information. Next, we'll jump back over to Postman. We'll jump over to generating a JWT. As you can see, it's asking for the auth key to be provided. So let's add that in. Uh, I don't remember it, so let me jump back and capture that from my auth codes. Jump back into Postman, paste that in for the value, and click it. And the JWT is regenerated. Now that we've generated the JWT using an auth key, let's go ahead and let's test this out with validation. We would assume that it wouldn't work because we requested that it be required. But let's go ahead and let's test it out anyways. It worked. Why did it work? That's odd. 
let's test out a login. Did it work? It did. Well, that's strange. Let's resolve this. To resolve this, go back to the Login tab and then locate Auto Login Requires Auth Code. Check this to Yes and click Save. Now let's jump back and repeat the process. It should fail, as you can see. So now it's actually saying you require an auth key to validate this further. Finally, let's make it a little more secure. Everything up to this point has been done using query parameters, but that can be less than secure. As an alternative, we can pass parameters in the header using a bearer token. Let's start this off by first validating our current structure. We'll generate a new JWT, copy it, and then apply it to our validation process. But notice how the validation process uses a query which is located in our URL, which is publicly accessible and not so secure. The same thing happens with our login validation. To start using a Barrett token in our header, switch back to the plugin settings. Underneath the Get JWT Token From, turn Request Off and turn Header On, then click Save. Back in Postman, go ahead and turn off the JWT query and jump over to the headers and add the key Authorization, followed by the word Bear, Space, copy your JWT, and paste it after the word Bear, but make sure there is a space after the word Bear, then the JWT. Click Send and the authorization works. Go ahead, test it out for the login as well. Disable the JWT, add the header, authorization, add the bearer token, paste in the JWT and test it out. And you logged in fine. Thank you for watching and I hope this helped.